Hey guys. Hey. With property prices in London still being expensive, today we want to look at the top 10 commuter towns to live near London. Think of this as your go-to commuter towns that won't break the bank. Yep, from charming neighbourhoods to affordable housing, kind of, we've got it all covered on today's video. Buckle up for this journey of finding your slice of suburbia just a train ride away. This video is part two, so we'd highly recommend that you watch part one of the 10 other top 10 commuter towns to live near London. We'll link to it above and below for you to watch in your own time. For those who are to our channel, I'm Ken, an accountant, former CFO, entrepreneur and investor. And I'm Mary, a digital marketer, a former e-business analyst and a business owner. Together as a couple, we run the Humble Penny and Financial Joy Academy. And more recently, we've become published authors of our own book titled Financial Joy, a 10 week plan to help you banish debt, grow your money and unlock financial freedom. We'll link to it below and above for you to check it out. As usual, we'd appreciate if you subscribe to our channel. And as you'll see in a moment, we've put a ton, ton. a ton of research into this video we're about to do. So please do hit subscribe, um, support our channel mm. and watch more amazing content come through for you guys. All right, let's jump straight in. So our very first town is Bedford in Bedfordshire. Bedford is a market town in Bedfordshire, England. It is 46 miles northwest of London. It takes about 42 minutes to travel from Bedford to St Pancras International on the East Midlands Railway. You can also go via Thameslink into Blackfriars, but it takes longer. The cost of an annual season ticket to London terminals from Bedford is a whopping £6,380. Wow. Yep. Properties in Bedford had an overall average price of £322,009 over the last year. The majority of sales in Bedford during the last year were terrace properties selling for an average price of £277,564. Semi properties sold for an average of £335,623, with detached properties fetching £515,424. Overall, soap prices in Bedford over the last year were 1% down on the previous year mm. and 9% up on a 2020 peak of £294,258. Mm -hmm. One bedroom rents for an average cost of £1,175 per calendar month, a two bed rents for an average cost of £1,285 per calendar month, mm. and a three bed rents for an average cost of £1,469 per calendar month. Up on the screen is a summary of all the costs of renting in Bedford and how the median rent compares to the average rent. There are 148 properties for rent in Bedford with 49 properties listed to rent in the last 14 days. Mm. This shows that there are many properties available to rent. In terms of crime rate, there are 108 crimes per 1,000 people. Mm. There are 52 schools or colleges with a three mile radius of Bedford. Six of them are rated as outstanding by Ofsted. For shopping, Bedford has a vibrant town centre offering shoppers a range of high quality shops, many unique independent retailers, along with major retailers and departmental stores. The Harper and Howard centres attract millions of shoppers a year and have a range of shops all under one roof. In summary, Bedford offers a compelling proposition for those seeking a well-rounded and fulfilling lifestyle. Uh -huh. The town's strategic location with convenient access to London and other major cities makes it an ideal residential hub. Hmm. Bedford's diverse housing options from charming period properties hmm. to modern developments ensuring there's something for everyone. Okay. Boasting excellent schools, a vibrant community spirit and a range of cultural and recreational amenities, hmm. Bedford creates an environment conducive to family life. While Bedford offers a close-knit community atmosphere, some may find this pace of life more relaxed than in bustling urban areas. So jump in the comments and let us know if you live in Bedford and yeah, what you think about what we shared. Awesome. Our second town is Brentwood in Essex. So sitting just outside the M25, Brentwood came into the spotlight when the first series of TOWIE, which is based in the town, aired in 2010. Since the opening of the Elizabeth Line, it's getting attention for very different reasons as the West End and beyond are now far more accessible. Brentwood is a town in Essex, England, in the London commuter belt, 20 miles northeast of Charing Cross and close to the M25 motorway. It takes about 26 minutes to travel from Brentwood to London for Liverpool Street via Great East Anglia trains. The cost of an annual season ticket to London terminals from Brentwood 
is a whopping £6,380. Hmm. Properties in Brentwood had an overall average price of £560,089 over the last year. The majority of sales in Brentwood during the last year were semi-detached properties selling for an average of £531,485. Detached properties sold for an average of £995,517 with flats fetching £278,606. Overall, sold prices in Brentwood over the last year were 5% up on the previous year and 10% up on the 2020 peak of 508,844. So pretty significant rises there. One bed rent for average cost of 1,222 pounds per month. Two beds rent for an average of 1,625 pounds per month. And three beds rent for 2,040 pounds per month. Up on the screen is a summary of all the costs of renting in Brentwood and how the median rent compares to the average rent prices. There were 123 properties for rent in Brentwood with only 29 properties listed uh, for rent in the last 14 days. So there's a decent renters market there essentially. In terms of crime rate, there are only 85 crimes per thousand people, which is pretty good actually. In terms of schools, there are 34 schools and colleges within a three mile radius of Brentwood. Seven of them are rated as outstanding, which is actually a high number relatively. For shopping in Brentwood, it has a diverse and vibrant shopping scene. The town boasts a mix of high street stores, independent boutiques and specialist shops, creating a well-rounded shopping experience. Brentwood High Street is a focal point for shopping, featuring a range of fashion retailers, beauty salons, homeware stores and so on. Additionally, the Bay Tree Centre is a popular shopping destination with a variety of shops and eateries. You can find well-known brands alongside unique local businesses, providing a diverse selection for shoppers. The town also hosts regular markets offering fresh produce, artisanal goods and handmade crafts. In summary, Brentwood promises a lifestyle marked by a perfect blend of suburban tranquility and modern amenities. With its excellent schools, parks and recreational facilities, Brentwood is an ideal setting for families. The town's well-connected trans tra transportation links, for example the Elizabeth Line, ensures easy access to London and neighbouring areas, making it an attractive choice for commuters. Potential downsides though include a relatively high cost of living compared to some neighbouring er neighboring areas and potential congestion, especially during peak travel times. Now, while Brentwood boasts a vibrant community and cultural events, some may find that the nightlife is not as bustling as in larger cities. Now let's look at Chelmsford in Essex. Mm -hmm. Chelmsford is an English city northwest of England. It's a thriving city with a rich history of modern amenities and diverse community. Chelmsford has a history of dating back to Roman times and evidence of its heritage has been seen in various historic buildings, mm -hmm. including the 13th century cathedral of St. Mary, which is the second smallest cathedral in England. Um, the city's architecture reflects its evolution over the centuries, historically known for its association Association with engineering and manufacturing. The city has diversified its economic base with a focus on technology and innovation. The population for Chelmsford is white 96%, black 0.7%, Asian 1.4%, mixed 1.1% and other 0.7%. It takes about 36 minutes to travel from Chelmsford to London Liverpool Street via Great East Anglia trains. The cost of an annual season ticket to London terminals from Chelmsford is £6,380. Properties around Chelmsford had an overall average price of £404,156 over the last year. Mm -hmm. The majority of sales around Chelmsford during the last year were flats, mm. selling for an average price of £227,000, £104. Wow. Semi-detached prices sold for an average of £433,552, mm. with terrace properties fetching £378,386. Overall, sold house prices around Chelmsford over the last year were 3% down on a previous year mm. and 2% up 
on the 2020 peak of £395,584. Mm. One bedroom rents for an average cost of £1,228 per calendar month. A two bed rents for an average cost of £1,602 per calendar month. And a three bed rents for an average cost of £1,786 per calendar month. Mm. Up on the screen is a summary of all the costs of renting in Chelmsford and how the median rent compares to the average rent. Mm. There were 138 properties for rent in Chelmsford with 52 properties listed to rent in the last 14 days. So this is a good renters market. In terms of crime rates, there were 101 crimes per 1,000 people. There are 57 schools or colleges with a three mile radius of Chelmsford. A whopping 13 of them are rated outstanding by Ofsted. One of them is King Edward VI Grammar School in Chelmsford. The city is also home to Anglia Ruskin University, which has a campus in Chelmsford. Chelmsford offers a diverse range of shopping experiences from high street stores to independent boutiques. Bond Street, a modern shopping and leisure destination, provides a mix of retail and dining options. The city also has a variety of restaurants, cafes and pubs. The city hosts various cultural events, festivals and markets throughout the year. Highlands House and Estate, a beautiful park with a historic mansion, is a popular venue for events and outdoor activities catering to different tastes. In summary, Chelmsford offers a compelling proposition for those seeking a well-rounded and dynamic lifestyle. This historic city seamlessly combines its rich heritage with modern amenities, creating an environment that caters to diverse tastes and preferences. Mm. Chelmsford thrive in economy, particularly in the technology and innovation sectors, provides ample employment opportunities. The city's excellent transportation links, including frequent train services to London, make it an ideal choice for commuters. Residents can enjoy a variety of cultural experiences from exploring historic landmarks like Cathedral of St. Mary to attending events at vibrant venues like Central Park. Potential drawbacks, however, may include a higher cost of living compared mm. to some neighbouring areas and occasional congestion on the road network. I've got to say the house prices there on average actually are not too crazy. You know, 400 and something thousand. It's not bad. It's not so it's bad. Not bad. Okay, our next, our next town is Harlow in Essex, okay? There's other places we're gonna fix on, but Harlow in Essex. Harlow is a town in Essex, England, located in the west of the county, situated on the border with Hertfordshire and London. It was designated as a new town in 1947, and its design was aimed at creating a balanced and modern urban environment. It takes about 43 minutes to travel from Harlow to London Liverpool Street via Great East Anglia trains. The cost of an annual season ticket to London terminals from Harlow is £5,576. Properties in Harlow had an average price of £346,508 over the last year. The majority of sales in Harlow during the last year were terrace properties selling for an average of £327,184. Flats sold for an average of £204,898, with semis set fetching £430,333. Overall, sold prices in Harlow over the last year were 1% down on the previous year and 4% up on the 2020 peak of £332,744. A one bed for those who are renting rents for an average cost of £1,233 per month. Two beds rent for £1,507 per calendar month and three beds for £1,829 per calendar month. Up on the screen is a summary for you guys of the cost of renting in Harlow and how the median rent compares to the average rent. Now, there were 52 properties for rent in Harlow with only 15 properties listed for rent in the last 14 days. So this is a pretty busy renters market and things are getting snapped up. In terms of crime rate, there were 124 crimes per 1,000 people. Looking at schools, you have 42 schools or colleges within a three mile radius of Harlow with only one of them though, rated as outstanding by Ofsted. I've got to say that says a lot. That says a lot. Yeah. 
For shopping, Harlow offers a diverse and convenient shopping experience with prominent destinations such as the Harvey Centre and the Water Gardens Shopping Centre at the heart of the town's retail scene. The Harvey Centre, a bustling shopping mall, features a mix of well-known high street brands and dining options, while the Water Gardens Shopping Centre provides an additional array of shops and eateries. The town's high street is dotted with a blend of independent stores and larger retail chains, offering a traditional shopping atmosphere. Harlow's regular markets, including Market Square, showcase local traders offering fresh produce and crafts. The presence of retail parks such as, the, such as Edinburgh Way Retail Park adds to the town's retail diversity, making Harlow an appealing destination for a range of shopping preferences. In summary, buying a property in Harlow offers a mix of advantages and considerations. Now, on the positive side, the town's well-planned design featuring green spaces and modern amenities provides residents with a harmonious living environment. Harlow's diverse housing options cater to various preferences. The town's proximity to London, coupled with excellent transport links, is advantageous for commuters. Harlow boasts cultural attractions, shopping centres like the Harvey Centre and a community spirit reflected in local markets. However, Potential buyers should be aware of certain challenges, such as variations in the quality of schools and in some areas, issues related to crime. Mm -hmm. As with any location, individual experiences may vary and thorough research is advised to ensure the compatibility of Harlow's offerings with your lifestyle and priorities. The next town is Hitchin in Hertfordshire. Okay, so Hitchin is a historic market town located in North Hertfordshire, England, known for its picturesque streets, medieval architecture, and vibrant community spirit. Hitchin offers a charming blend of heritage and modern living. Hitchin boasts a rich history dating back to medieval times. The town's historic market square is surrounded by timber frame buildings and the beautiful St. Mary's Church, which medieval and Tudor elements is a prominent landmark. It takes about 33 minutes to travel from Hitchin to London St Pancreas International via Thameslink. The cost of an annual season ticket to London terminals from Hitchin is £6,240. Wow. Yeah, properties in Hitchin had an overall average price of £455,094 over the last year. The majority of sales in Hitchin during the last year were flats, selling mm. for an average price of £239,767. Mm. Tevis property sold for an average of £460,126. Mm. Semi properties fetched for £541,999. Overall, so prices in Hitchin over the last year were 7% down on the previous year and similar to the 2020 peak of £452,938. A one bed rents for an average cost of 1,164 per calendar month, two bed rents for an average cost of 1,290 pounds per calendar month, and a three bed rents for an average cost of 1,549 pounds per calendar month. Up on the screen is a summary of all the costs of renting in Hitchin and how the median rent is compared to average rent. There are 46 properties for rent in Hitchin with only seven properties listed for rent wow. in the last 14 days. Yeah, so this is not a renter's market at all. In terms of crime rates, there are only 55 crimes per 1,000 people. That's brilliant. That's really low, isn't it? That's so low. Yeah. Yeah. There are 31 schools or colleges within a three mile radius of Hitchin. Five of them are rated That's outstanding. That's high as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Shopping in Hitchin is characterised by its charming blend of independent shops, boutiques and traditional markets. The town's historic market square hosts regular markets offering fresh produce and artisan goods. Hitchin's streets are lined with unique and locally owned businesses contributing to a diverse retail experience. Major shopping centres may not be as prevalent in Hitchin as the town emphasises independent and local establishments, which is nice. However, the town's commercial hub features the Churchgate Shopping Centre, providing a mixture of shops, services and cafes in the central location. In summary, the town's proximity to the capital, facilitated by efficient rail links, makes it an attractive option for London commuters seeking a more tranquil living environment. Mm. Hitchin's historical charm, community spirit and green spaces contribute to a higher quality of life. Now that's nice. Nice. <laughs> However, <laughs> The commute, while convenient, can be a factor to consider as it takes approximately 30 to 40 minutes by train to London King's Cross. Mm -hmm. The higher cost of living in Hertfordshire compared to some London suburbs might be a consideration, but the trade-off 
is the unique lifestyle offered by Hitchin. With a strong sense of community, cultural events, and a range of amenities, Hitchin provides a welcoming escape from the bustling pace of London, making it a favorable choice for those seeking a balance between urban employment opportunities and a more relaxed residential setting. Yeah, I think I'll like it in Hitchin. Yeah, me too. <laughs> All right, one? for town six, we're heading over to Rochester in Kent. Rochester is a town in Medway in Kent. It's at the lowest bridging point of the River Medway, about 30 miles from London. Rochester has a long and storied history, dating back to Roman times. The city's most iconic landmark is Rochester Castle, a well-preserved 12th century fortress, and Rochester Cathedral, which dates back to the 11th century. The famous Victorian novelist Charles Dickens spent much of his early life in Rochester and the city served as the inspiration for some of his works. The annual Dickens Festival celebrates the, lit the literary heritage attracting visitors with themed events and activities. The city is also home to the University of the Creative Arts, adding an additional dimension to its cultural landscape. It takes about 40 minutes to travel from Rochester to London Cannon Street via the Southeastern or 38 minutes to London St Pancras again via the Southeastern. The cost of an annual season ticket to London terminals from Rochester is £5,764. However, if you wanted the high speed services option the Southeastern offers is £7,012 per year. Properties in Rochester had an overall Average price of £322,838 over the last year. Wow. Wow, that says a lot, right? Yeah. Pay attention. The majority of sales in Rochester during the last year were terrace properties selling for an average price of £291,683. Semi-detached properties sold for an average of £362,628 with flats fetching £181,460. Overall, sold prices in Rochester over the last year were 2% up on the previous year and 13% up on the 2020 peak at £284,448. This yeah. tells me about this says something about Rochester. It does. It Pay really, attention, really right? Does. <laughs> One bed rents for an average of £1,000 a month per calendar mm -hmm. month. Two beds for £1,355 a month. Mm -hmm. Three beds for £1,608 per calendar month. Up on the screen is a summary of all the costs of renting in Rochester and how the median rent compares to the average rent. There were 252 properties for rent in Rochester with a whopping 69 properties listed in the last 14 days. So this wow. is a booming renters market. This tells me a lot of buy-to-let landlords are in Rochester. Yeah. In terms of crime rate, there are 105 crimes per thousand people. So not too high. Nice. And there are 82 schools or colleges within a three mile radius of Rochester. 10 of them are rated as outstanding by wow. Ofsted. Wow double digit. Rochester can offer shopping, offers a delightful shopping experience characterized by its blend of independent shops, antique stores and boutiques, particularly alongside picturesque high street. While the city doesn't boast large shopping centers, the Pentagon shopping center is nearby. Chatham provides a diverse range of retail options and is easily accessible. The historic Rochester high street lined with charming storefronts contributes to the town's unique shopping atmosphere. Residents and visitors can explore a variety of specialist shops ranging from vintage bookstores to artisanal craft outlets, creating a distinctive and locally driven retail scene, which I think sounds really mm -hmm. lovely. In summary, buying a property in Rochester and Kent while working in London presents a well balanced opportunity. The city's rich history, picturesque architecture, and cultural events contribute to a unique and charming living environment. Rochester's proximity to along with direct trains uh, services to the capital is a significant positive for commuters seeking a tranquil residential setting. However, potential buyers should consider the daily commute, which takes approximately 35 to 40 minutes by train and factor in associated season ticket costs. The shopping scene, though diverse, might not match the scale of larger urban centers. The impact of tourism during events like the Dickens Festival could also be a consideration. Overall, Rochester provides a historic and culturally rich alternative to London living, but individuals should weigh the commute and lifestyle against the unique benefits of this charming Kentish city. 
Right, love it, love yes. it. Yes, what's so our next one? Next one, number seven is Romford, and we've done something a bit different, and Romford is actually in London. So Romford is a large town in East London, England, 14 miles northwest of Charing Cross, part of the London Borough of Havering. The town is one of the major metropolitan centres of Greater London. Romford benefits from excellent transportation links. The town is served by the Romford Railway Station, providing frequent train services to London Liverpool Street. There is also the new Elizabeth Line in the London Fairs Zone 6. Additionally, it has good road connections with the A12 and the A127 arterial roads nearby. It takes about 29 minutes from Romford to London Liverpool Street via the Elizabeth Line. The cost of an annual season ticket to London Liverpool Street from Romford is £2,292. <laughs> or £2,940 if you also want a Southern Eastern high speed services. That's really good. That is excellent. That's really good. What's the catch? All right, <laughs> let's go. go Properties in Romford had an average overall price of £443,872 over the last year. Very good for London. It is, it is. Okay, the majority of sales in Romford during the last year were terrace properties selling for an average price of £428,641. Semi-detached properties sold for an average of £507,669 with flats fetching £253,925. Overall, sold prices in Romford over the last year were similar to the previous year in and 11% up on a 2020 wow. peak of £400,507. One bed rents for an average cost of £1,379 per calendar month. A two bed rents for an average cost of £1,783 per calendar month. Mm -hmm. And a three bed rents for an average cost of £2,192 per calendar month. Up on the screen is a summary of all the costs of renting in Rumford and show the median rents compared to the average rent. Mm -hmm. There were 203 properties for rent in Romford, with 75 properties listed to rent in the last 14 days. So this is a booming renter's market. In terms of crime rate, there is, this is the catch. This is the catch. This is the catch. There's a whopping 725 Ooh. crimes per 1,000 people. That is high. Uh, so this is the highest we've ever seen. This compares to 95 crimes per 1,000 in the whole borough of Havering. We want to hear from you in the comments. So if anyone lives in Romford, get them to comment on this video and tell us if the crime is a problem in Romford because that yeah. number is ridiculous. It is. It's ridiculous. It is. It is. There are 113 schools or colleges within the three mile radius of Romford. A high 20 of them are rated as outstanding by Ofsted. That's really high. That's really high. Wow. So lots of outstanding schools, and lots brilliant of connections to London, but also lots of crime. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Add up, but yeah. Romford is known for its vibrant shopping centre, the Liberty Shopping Centre located in the heart of the town, houses a variety of shops, restaurants and entertainment options. The town also has a bustling market offering a diverse range of goods. In summary, buying a property in Rumford, London offers a mix of advantages and considerations, especially for those working in a city. The town benefits from excellent transportation links, especially with the Elizabeth Line enhancing connectivity and streamlining the commute to central London. Rumford's dynamic shopping centre, diverse housing options and vibrant nightlife contribute to a lively and convenient living environment. However, it's crucial to be aware of the occasional traffic congestion during peak hours and variations in the quality of certain local services. Mm. Additionally, crime rates in Romford have been a concern with certain areas experiencing high incidents than others. Yeah. What's the next one? Next one is Rugby in Warwickshire. So Rugby is a market town in eastern Warwickshire in England, close to the River Avon. It has a rich history and it's perhaps best known as the birthplace of rugby football. The sport originated at Rugby School in the 19th century and a close by landmark, the Rugby School, still stands as a testament to the town's historical significance. It takes about 54 minutes to travel from Rugby to London Euston via the Avanti West Coast Line. The cost of an annual season ticket to London terminals from Rugby is a whopping £6,628. Mm. However though, properties in Rugby had an overall average price of £298 411 pounds over the last year. The majority of sales in Rugby during the last year were semi-detached properties selling for an average of 278,969 pounds. Detached properties sold for an average of 431,034 pounds. Oh, okay. With terrace properties fetching 225,845 pounds. Overall, sold prices in Rugby over the last year were 5% down on the previous year 
and 9% up on the 2019 peak of £269,748. Now, for the renters, a one bed rent for an average cost of £815 per calendar month, two beds for £898 per calendar month, and three beds for £1,294 per calendar month in rugby. Up on the screen is a summary of all the costs of renting in rugby and how the median rent compares to the average rent. Now, there were 88 properties for rent in rugby with 33 properties listed for rent in the last 14 days. So this is a fairly busy renter's market. In terms of crime rate though, there are 70 crimes per thousand people, which wow. is really low. It's very low. Right? <laughs> For schools, there are 46 schools or colleges within a three mile radius of rugby. Seven of them are rated as outstanding by Ofsted. The shopping scene in rugby caters to a wide range of preferences from well-known brands to unique locally owned establishments, creating a dynamic and accessible environment for shoppers. In summary, on the positive side, rugby offers a tranquil and historical setting with good transport links. The low cost of living compared to London is a notable advantage, allowing residents to enjoy a more affordable lifestyle. However, potential buyers should consider the daily commute, which takes approximately one hour each way. Hmm. Yeah, that's at least two hours a day and factor in associated costs and time commitments. Gosh. While rugby has a thriving community, cultural events and green spaces, some may find the town's amenities and entertainment options are not as extensive as those in larger urban centres. Overall, the decision to buy a property in rugby should hinge on individual preferences regarding lifestyle, mm -hmm. the desire for a more serene environment, and the trade-offs associated with the commute to London. Mm, rugby sounds beautiful though. Yes, I think so too. <laughs> So now let's go to Sidcup in Kent. Mm. Okay, so Sidcup is a suburban district located in London Borough of Bexley in the county of Kent, England. It's primarily a residential suburb with a mix of housing types, including detached, semi-detached, as well as some apartment buildings. The suburb attracts families from professionals looking for a quieter residential environment while remaining close to London. The area is known for its green spaces, including Footscray Meadows and Sidcup Place, providing opportunities for outdoor activities, walks and relaxations. The Sidcup Railway Station offers direct services to London Charing Cross, Cannon Street and other destinations, making it a convenient location for commuters. It takes about 26 minutes to travel from Sidcup to London Charing Cross or Cannon Street via the Southern Eastern. The cost of an annual season ticket to London terminals from Sidcup is £2,020. Properties in Sidcup have an overall average price of £446,527 mm -hmm. over the last year. The majority of sales in Sidcup during the last year were semi-detached properties selling for an average price of £552,456. Tevis properties sold for an average price of £54,650 with flats fetching £275,142. Mm. Overall, sold prices in Sidcup over the last year were 4% down on a previous year and 6% up on a 2020 peak of £436,762. One bed rents for an average cost of £1,290 per calendar month, a two bed rents for an average cost of £1,489 per calendar month, and three bed rents for an average cost of £2,000 per calendar month. Up on the screen is a summary again of all the costs of renting in Sidcup. There are 28 properties for rent in Sidcup, with only eight properties listed to rent in the last 14 days. Properties for rent get snapped up quickly in this area. Mm -hmm. In terms of crime rate, there are 132 crimes per 1,000 people. Mm -hmm. There are 89 schools or colleges within a three mile radius of Sidcup. 12 of them are rated as outstanding by Ofsted, including grammar schools like Bexley Grammar and Townley Grammar School. Sidcup Kent offers a convenient, diverse shopping experience with a mix of local shops and larger retail centres. The high street features a variety of independent businesses, cafes and restaurants, mm. providing a charming and personalised shopping atmosphere. 
The Nudgeons Shopping Park is a major retail destination hosting a range of well-known stores and offering a convenient shopping experience. Additionally, the Sidcup Market contributes to the local scene providing fresh produce and a selection of goods. In summary, Sidcup is great for families and single people. The suburb's residential charm, green spaces like Footscray Meadows and proximity to Sidcup Railway Station with direct services to London make it an appealing option for those seeking a quieter lifestyle while maintaining their accessibility to the city. The area boasts a mix of house options, including family homes and apartments. Mm. There are also great schools, including grammar schools. However, potential buyers should consider the daily commute, which takes approximately 25 to 35 minutes by train and weighs against the benefits of a more serene living environment. What's the Look, last one? I'd take, I'd take 26 minutes commute any day. Yeah, it's not bad. I think it's decent. <clears throat> That's really good. The last one is Woking in Surrey. Woking is a town located in the county of Surrey, England, situated about 23 miles southwest of central London. It is known for its excellent transport links. The Woking railway station provides fast and frequent train services to London Waterloo, making it a popular choice for commuters. The town is also well connected by road with the M25 motorway, motorway nearby. It takes about 32 minutes to travel from Woking to London Waterloo via the South Western Railway. The cost of an annual season ticket to London terminals from Woking is £3,880, which is actually not that bad. Mm -hmm. Properties in Woking have an overall average price of £589,064 over the last year, so quite expensive. The majority of sales in Woking during the last year were detached properties. Wow, mm -hmm. that's the first. Yeah. Selling for an average of nine hundred and sixty-three thousand four hundred and one pounds. Okay, these people have money. They do. <laughs> Semis uh, sold for an average of five hundred fifty-three thousand five hundred seventy-eight pounds, with flat fetching two hundred seventy-nine thousand five hundred thirty-one pounds. Overall, so prices in working over the last year were similar to the previous year, and ten percent up mm. on the twenty twenty peak of five hundred thirty-four thousand and 76 pounds. A one bed for the renters rent to an average of 1,178 pounds, two beds for 2,021 pounds, and three beds for 2,277 pounds per calendar month in Woking. Up on the screen is a summary of all the costs of renting in Woking and how the median rent compares to the average rents. Now, for properties listed for rent, there were 181 properties listed in Woking with 45 properties listed for rent in the last 14 days. So this is a fairly busy renters market. In terms of crime rate, there was only 58 crimes per 1,000 people, yes. which is very, very low. low. There are 42 schools or colleges within a three mile radius of Woking with a high eight of them rated as outstanding by Ofsted. For shopping, Woking offers a diverse and convenient shopping experience with a mix of high street and independent stores. The Peacock's Shopping Centre stands as a major retail hub featuring a variety of well-known brands and shops catering to different needs. The town centre boasts additional shopping options including the Wolsey Place Shopping Centre and Bandstand, provides a range of retail, dining and entertainment choices. Woking's shopping scene is complemented by its lively street markets offering fresh produce and artisanal goods. With its selection of shopping centres and a mix of local and chain establishments, Woking provides residents and visitors alike with a comprehensive and enjoyable retail environment. In summary, the town's exceptional transportation links with frequent and fast train services to London Waterloo make Woking an ideal choice for commuters seeking a manageable daily commute. Woking provides a vibrant urban environment with diverse shopping options, cultural amenities, and recreational facilities. However, potential buyers should weigh up the cost of living as Surrey tends to have higher property prices against the convenience of proximity to both London and the picturesque Surrey countryside. Woo. Yes, I know, right? Wow, we, we, <laughs> we did tell you guys that we were going to come in the detail. <laughs> but we'd love to hear from you in the uh, comments. What did you think of the list of 10 places to live near London? Do you have a recommendation of any other towns that you personally feel should yeah. have made that list? Let us know in the comment section and let's get talking. Yeah, and if you missed part one, definitely make sure you watch it of the top 10 places to live near London. Again, 10 other community towns. We'll link to it below, as we mentioned before, and above 
for you guys to check it out. And obviously, if you really enjoyed today's video, we'd really, really appreciate it. Hit the share button with other people, hit the subscribe button. Let people know about the good work we're putting into our videos. Yeah. Thank you so much, guys, for watching this video. And as always, in, in all things, things, be thankful, thankful and, and seek joy. joy. Take, Take care. care. Bye. Bye. Local and chain established. Sorry. <laughs> it's okay. It's not... <laughs> You've done really well, though. You've done really well. I can't sit together. It's right. All right. Let's get back to it. All right. Um,